anchor rods attach the column base plates to the foundation, therefore they are a very important structural elements. The design of anchor rods has become very complex and time consuming with the development of the ACI anchoring provisions. But how do you design the anchor rods? How do you calculate the tension and shear forces in the anchor rods? And then how do you design them? How do you implement the ACI anchoring provisions? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to answer all these questions. We're going to cover the ACI anchoring provisions. And in addition, we're going to see how all this philosophy has been implemented in as deep steel. Let's get started. When a base plate is loaded concentrically with a vertical load, the resulting bearing stress is uniform, so the complete base plate is in compression. If we add a small moment, the bearing pressure diagram changes from uh, uniform to trapezoidal, but the base plate is still in compression. If we increase the moment further, a portion of the base plate is no longer in compression, and the anchor rods are providing the tension to maintain the static equilibrium. Once we calculate the tension in the anchor rods, it's necessary to design them. The ACI anchoring provisions treat the anchors in tension and in shear separately, and then they consider an interaction between tension and shear. These are the limited states that need to be checked for anchor rods in tension. First, the anchor rod needs to be checked for the steel failure. This is a measure of the capacity of the steel itself that depends on the material properties and the dimensions of the anchor, regardless of the anchoring conditions. The second limit state is the concrete breakout, which assumes a failure in the concrete, forming a prism in an angle of 35 degrees. The calculation of the breakout area is very complex and time-consuming, particularly if the anchors are located close to the edge of the support. If three or more uh, edges are closer than 1.5 HEF, which is the effective depth of the anchor rod, then the effective depth needs to be recalculated. So this calculation of the breakout area sometimes is not straightforward and is difficult to calculate. The third limit state that needs to be checked is the pullout. That considers the force to crush the concrete around the anchor rod head, so the anchor is completely pulled out from, from the foundation. And finally, the side phase blowout considers splitting of the concrete for anchors that are close to the, to the border, close to the edge of the foundation. These are the four uh, limit states that need to be considered for anchor rods in tension. I have prepared an example in ASDIP steel to illustrate the implementation of the ACI 318 anchoring provisions, the design of anchor rods. In this example, this is a base plate 17 by 17. It is on a concrete foundation, which is eccentric. Also, we are applying some forces, some um, vertical loads, dead and live, and some moments, dead and, dead and live as well. If we go to the materials tab, I have defined four anchor rods one at each corner, it's one inch uh, diameter. So in this case, we have a tension force of 27 kips for these two anchors. We go to the anchor edge tab. We go to the tension analysis tab. In this case, we are specifying a cracked concrete at the service level for the foundation. Also, we are providing some uh, reinforcement. It's an anchor reinforcement. If we go to the condensed tab, we can scroll down to the anchorage design area. This is the tension analysis of uh, this example. We can see here that uh, steel strength is controlling the design with uh, a ratio 0.52. Since we are providing some anchor reinforcement, the breakout is not being considered and the reverse strength is 0.49. So 52 is, uh, is controlling the design of tension. If we go to the detail tab, scroll down to the anchorage design, we can see here the tension analysis, the controlling load combination, and here are all the limit states. The steel strength is 0.52, the breakout is not controlling, then the pullout is 0.50, and finally the side phase blowout is not controlling, 
So the controlling tension design ratio is 0.52, which is the corresponding to the steel strength. Let's see what happens if we eliminate the anchor reinforcement. In this case, the concrete breakout is controlling, so we need to increase the, the depth of the anchor. Instead of 12, let's see, 18 inches. And we can see that the breakout is 0.91. Doesn't improve if, even if we increase the depth of the anchor rod. If we go to the graph, tension breakout, here is the breakout area. And the reason that the effective depth is not improving the, the breakout result is that the base plate is close to the border of the, of the support. So in this case, even if the embedment depth is 18 inches, the effective depth is only 11.7 inches. And this is controlled by the distance from the anchors to the border of the support. In this case, the breakout is so high that it's almost impossible to deal with that. We need to use anchor reinforcement to, to avoid the breakout failure. We have already discussed the design of anchor rods for tension. Let's focus now on the design of anchor rods for shear. When the shear force is small, it can be resisted by friction between the base plate and the foundation. But when the shear force increases, the friction may not be high enough to counteract this force. In that case, the plate will tend to slide and the force will be transferred to the anchor rods. The base plates are usually designed with oversized holes to allow for some misalignment in the location of the anchor rods. So it's very unlikely that when the base plate slides, all the anchor rods will be in contact with the base plate. Considering that, the ACI allows only the front anchor rods to be effective to resist the shear forces. For example, in this case, if the shear force is coming in this direction, only the front anchor rods, these two rods, will be effective, and these two anchor rods will not. The limit states for a shear design of anchor rods are the steel failure. This is a measure of the steel capacity itself, regardless of the anchoring conditions. It has to do with the material properties and, uh, and the dimensions of the anchor itself. The second limit state is the concrete breakout. It considers a failure surface in the concrete of 35 degrees prism. This type of failure may control the design when the anchor rod is close to the border. So this is the area, it's, it's called the breakout area in shear, which is 35 degrees from the vertical. And in some cases it's very complicated to calculate, similar to the tension uh, breakout area. And the third limited state to consider in the shear design of anchor rods is the concrete pry out which is the reaction at the bottom of the anchor as a result of the shear applied at the top. This may produce this kind of failure as well. Going back to ASIP steel, if we go to the anchorage tab, the shear analysis tab, that shows three alternatives, three different ways to resist the shear. One is friction only, shear log and friction, and anchor rods only. In this case, we will select the anchor rods only the program provides the option to weld the washers to the base plate so that all anchor rods will be effective in resisting the shear. If this checkbox is not checked, that means that only the front uh, rods will be effective. Similarly to the tension uh, analysis of anchor rods, in shear also some reinforcement can be provided. If it's an anchor reinforcement, it needs to be designed and detailed to transfer the load to the concrete, so the, the rebar needs to be developed. This is useful when we want to avoid the uh, breakout failure completely. If we go to the condensed tab, we go to the anchorage design. This is the shear analysis portion of the problem. Here we can see that the steel strength is also controlling the design in shear. And since we are providing also some reinforcement for shear, the concrete breakout is completely avoided. If we eliminate the reinforcement completely, so the breakout is, you know, the ratio is 2.46. It's completely unacceptable. And we can see that graphically. If we go to the graph, the shear breakout, only the two front anchor rods are effective, and this is the breakout area. 
since the anchor rods are very close to the border, even if the anchor rods are very long, the breakout area is 8.3 inches deep. So in this case, it's almost mandatory to include some rebars to avoid this failure in, in breakout. So let's use anchor reinforcement in this case. This is the interaction diagram that is necessary to comply with in the design of anchor rods uh, subject to tension and shear. Since the tension uh, ratio was 0.52 and the shear is 0 0.73, the combination of both the interaction between tension and shear is 0.95. We can see that the design is ductile, meaning that in tension, the controlling limit state is steel strength. The steel is failing first. And in shear also, the steel strength is controlling. So the steel is failing first as well in shear. So the design is ductile. This is the shear analysis. This is the controlling load combination. And we can see here the different limit states, the steel strength, the ratio is 0.73. Breakout, we saw that is not affecting, is not controlling. And finally, the, the, the pry out, which is 0.25. So the controlling ratio is the uh, steel strength, 0.73. As you can see, as the steel gives you the bearing stresses under the base plate, the tension and the anchor rods, also it calculates the tension uh, breakout area and also the shear breakout area. With this we conclude the presentation of the anchor rod design for tension and shear per ACI 318 anchoring provisions. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you very much for your attention.